Good evening and welcome. This is Primetime News on MITV. I am Tomisi Adebukola. In the news tonight, the Supreme Court restrains CBN from implementing deadline for the old Naira note validity. Zainek assures the federal government of readiness to hold February 25 general election. And Zelensky urges allies to send fighter jets during trip to the United Kingdom. Gabriel Yusuf returns to Arsenal after knee surgery. And now the news in detail. To the pleasure of Nigerians, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has restrained the federal government from implementing the February 10 deadline for the old 20, uh, 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1,000 Naira notes to stop being legal tenders. Three northern states, Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara, had a motion expertise filed on the 3rd of February by the lawyer Abdulhakim Mustafa, senior advocate of Nigeria, prayed the apex court to halt the CBN's Naira redesign policy. A seven-man panel of the Supreme Court led by Justice John Okoro in a unanimous ruling granted an interim injunction restraining the federal government, commercial banks, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, from implementing the February 10 deadline for the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes to stop being a legal tender. The court further held that the federal government, CBN, commercial banks must not continue with a deadline pending the determination of a notice in respect of the issue on February 15. After the ruling, the lawyer to the three state governments, Mustafa, said Zamfara Kogi and Keduna dragged the federal government and the Apex Court, uh, Apex Bank, to court because of the policy causing hardship on Nigerians, especially those in the rural areas. And the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has briefed the federal government, the Federal Executive Council, uh, presided over by President Muhammad Buhari, on the preparedness of the country's general election amid Naira petrol scarcity. The briefing is coming two days before an emergency meeting of the Council of State to be convened on Friday. The INEC chairman who spoke to State House correspondents after leaving the Federal Executive Council meeting expressed concerns that the current Naira petrol scarcity may affect logistics. Well, it is a general briefing, you know, it's in keeping with the tradition that on the eve of major um, elections, general election in particular, the commission is invited to brief council. It is also invited to brief the council of state. The briefing for the council of state is going to take place on Friday the 10th. So basically it's about the readiness of the commission to conduct the elections. So we took members of council through um, all the preparations that we have put in place for the election and the few challenges that we are facing and the steps that we have, take, uh, we have taken to address those challenges. I can tell you two of these challenges quickly. In another development, the federal government has blamed oil marketers for the untold hardship and the recent price hike, the profiteering of petroleum, which, ma uh, which puts many Nigerians through uh, pain. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timothy Silva, disclosed this while addressing the State House correspondence after the weekly Federal Executive Council fact meeting presided over by the President at the Council Chamber, the Presidential Villa Abuja. Timothy Silva had blamed uh, the petroleum products issues are not in short supply, but it challenged, it noted that the distribution of the products, a problem is that the government is working to resolve. The minister who observed that the petroleum products are now available in more quantity in the country, blamed its scarcity on factors it said are not under the ministry's control. Thank you very much. Um, this is quite unfortunate. We are not happy at all uh, what is going on. Uh, every, every hand is on deck. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the Ministry of Petroleum is not in control of all the factors that lead to scarcity, in the sense that there are forex issues as well and other issues. But at the moment today, there is supply. Um, 
but unfortunately, uh, the distribution and movement of the product uh, to various destinations is now, uh, uh, we are experiencing some bottlenecks. And I, I want to assure you that everything is being done, the NMPC Limited, NMDPR way, all the marketers, everybody's hand is on deck to ensure that this problem is resolved. The Lagos State government has put some measures in place to cushion the effect of the fuel crisis and the cash shortage in the state while commending the judiciary for the pronouncement on the Central Bank of Nigeria's exchange deadline. Now, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwulu, stated at the Lagos House Marina during a hard rest to Lagosians on the lingering fuel and cash shortage in the country that the state government has halted the road construction work on Ijegwegba to enable fuel tankers to dispatch the products. He also said food banks will be made available in some locations across the state to distribute food stuff to Nigerians, to Lagosians particularly. The governor also said the bus uh, rapid transit, the BRT, the lag ride, the lag ferries, the Lagos State-owned uh, transportation services would reduce uh, um, as calories will discount the half price of uh, the fares he also said arrangement had been made for 24 services at uh, some fuel stations to sell the products while providing adequate security for them. Will, in the next couple of days, also ease fuel dispatch from these locations to the various fuel stations. Also, you remember that we have agreed with them to commence 24-hour fuel sales at various petrol stations that want to have a 24-hour circle. And so the protections have been set out at various fuel stations and there's ability for them to sell fuel round the clock. We're going to be identifying various stakeholders, you know, maybe using um, our various religious bodies, using the various, I mean, known NGOs, I mean, using the various um, um, ethnic national to be able to identify, you know, um, uh, vulnerable citizens within the communities, and this will be going out to, to, to them, you know, from later today and tomorrow. In a related development, the Ogun State Governor Agdakwa Abiodun has visited a victim of a stray bullet of the police, Michael Gabriel, at the hospital following a violent protest by residents of the state yesterday. Abiodun, in company of the state health team, visited the intensive care unit of the Federal Medical Center, FMC Diaba, uh, where the victim is receiving treatment. Speaking to newsmen after the visit, the governor said the victim was hit by a police bullet in the arm in the process of dispersing angry protesters who want to burn public facilities. It disclosed the victim is alive and stable and therefore called for calm, stressing that the government will ensure the hardship currently experienced by state residents is given urgent attention. The medical director of the hospital at Dewale Musa Olomu. While speaking, said the hospital did all their best to ensure the victim lived. And match it with equipment, um, we can save lives. I want to plead with everyone in the state. Your governor is doing everything humanly possible at this time. We've spoken to Mr. President, we've spoken to the governor of Central Bank, I've been to Central Bank, I've met with the bankers. And you can see the situation is evolving positively. Please, I've met with the royal fathers, I've met with ballets. Please bear with us. We cannot resort to violence. Breaking banks, looting banks, breaking ATMs will not solve the problem. Their best to make the the victims to be all right and i thank god that we were able to resuscitate him he had that gut injury to the arm and that uh, ruptured a major vessel to that upper limb he will have lost that upper limb it penetrated his chest almost uh, missed his heart he will have been a dead person he missed 
it lost a lot of blood. Within the one hour or two, we have transfused about six pints of blood and a lot of fluid. This boy Talking politics now, senatorial candidate of the Labour Party in the Lagos West Senatorial District, Mashut Savado, has expressed confidence his party will record resounding success in the forthcoming general elections in the country. Speaking with newsmen on Wednesday at the Salvador Towers in Lagos, Savado said Labour Party is a people-oriented party that believes government must govern to give democratic dividends to the masses with the welfare of the people at most in its programme and policy. The Labour Party chieftain assured that with majority of registered voters being used, most of whom were solidly behind the Labour Party, his party would prove doubters wrong at the polls. He pointed out the electoral bill which President Mohamed Buhari assented to will reduce electoral malpractice which will enable Labour Party to record victories through a peaceful, credible and transparent election. As if you are talking if you are talking of certainty, it's as if you are talking of how Nigerians will be certain of winning their election. Nigerians are the owner of the Labour Party. Nigerians are the people that are working for the Labour Party. Nigerians, the youth, you can imagine when you talk of um, registered voters. 67% of registered voters are people between the ages of 18 and 35. And these are the drivers of Labour Party. Yes. These are the people that are earning, that we are working hard to have a better tomorrow. Yes. Them and their children. Yes. We have to start today yes. not to, to, to compromise anything for a better change in this country. Yes. We are very much prepared. A renowned senior advocate of Nigeria, San Ola Olani Pekun, has called on the Inspector General of Police to comply with a court order that committed the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, to prison for contempt. Olani Pekun said Bawa was trying to cause anarchy in the country by flagrantly disobeying court orders. Said Bawa had recently been committed to prison in a similar ruling by Federal Capital Territory High Court in November. He said this just as the office of the RJP received and acknowledged the order committing Bauer to prison on Wednesday. Speaking to the media on Wednesday, the senior advocate of Nigeria argued that no Nigerian or foreigner, no matter how highly placed, should be allowed to rubbish the courts, noting the same instrument puts the EFCC bus in office. He stated that nobody at all, no matter how highly placed, no matter the position occupied, not even the president of Nigeria should disobey a court order. And the Lagos State Government says surveying plays a critical role in its infrastructural development across the state from planning of project to execution stage. As surveyors play a huge role in, so in social economic development of any nation. Special advisor to the Lagos State Governor on Infrastructure, Aramide Adeyoye, made this assertion on Wednesday in Lagos while speaking on the role of surveying and infrastructural development in Nigeria at the 2023 National Conference of Association of Private Practicing Surveyors of Nigeria, APPSN. Adeyoye said nearly all the sectors of national development and the economy requires the input of surveyors, adding the surveying comes before any infrastructural development. The guest speaker, Olumide Ogundikwe, stated that the topography of an area in identifying flood prone areas um, erosion land measurement among others make surveying to play a critical role in the engineering profession the national chairman appsn kayode oluwamotemi oluwamotemi urged private practicing surveyors to join hands with the state government in developing the state through infrastructural provisions as an association of private practicing surveyors i honor to privilege of the excellent work your colleagues are doing presently in government and to establish strategic partnerships and collaboration towards advancing from your profession. I said it clearly, if we must move this city, it's a mega city. And of course, a mega city comes with its unusual problems. I keep saying it, Lagos is a victim of its own success. The infrastructure is overstretched, but we can only plan better with data. 
and we can plan better with data when we also have surveyors who are willing to take on the plunge. The role of surveying in infrastructural development of any nation cannot be overemphasized. Surveyors play an integral role in land development. Specifically, the role of surveyor in urban infrastructural development is unlimited. Surveyor is the first link, just like the special advisor said, between the dreams that is proposed project and its realization. Increase uh, boundary accuracy. You know, getting the right uh, boundaries for the piece of land where the work is to be executed is very important. And such information you can only get uh, from uh, the measurements uh, made by the surveyors. When it comes to infrastructure development, surveyors are the specialists in the measurements of all the linear, of the angular, of the positions. So you cannot do anything in engineering or infrastructure development without measurements. But you must know the length of the road, you must know the length of the right of way for them, you must know the height of the of the of the of the electricity poles and the foundation and not so railway everything. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwalu has announced the salaries of sanitation workers in the state have been increased by 20% as promised by him at the recent rally organized by the Association of Waste Managers of Nigeria, AWAMN, in support of the presidential bid of Ashua Jubal Metinubu. The managing director of the Waste Management Authority, Loma Ibrahim Mujumbodi, made this announcement during a meeting with the sweepers at Loma's headquarters in Jaro Lokwa, where he also revealed they will be provided with new work tools such as overalls, uh, boots, personal protective equipment, PPE, among others, which he said would enable them to discharge their duties effectively. He also admonished the sanitation workers to ensure they perform their civic responsibility by voting in at the coming polls while urging them to spread the word to their neighborhood and exercise their voting rights, adding government was counting on them to make their voices heard through their votes. The Lama boss elogized the APC presidential candidate, Bolatinobu, whom he said would introduce the PSP and the street sweeping scheme during his tenure as Lagos State Governor, adding he laid the foundation for effective waste management which the state is currently benefiting from. You're still watching Primetime News on MITV. We now take a break. When we return, we'll bring you our foreign stories. of the world and they will bring entertainment that's just as big don't miss the first ever season of big brother titans with two african giants Naija and Nsamsi on the biggest roof together big brother titans starts on sunday 15th of january on dstv 198 go tv 29 and african magic headline sponsor bamboo flutterwave and Lotto star Welcome back. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urges allies to send his country 
fighter jets saying combat aircraft for Ukraine wings uh, for freedom, just as they called for stronger sanctions against Russia. Addressing the UK's parliament on a rare trip outside his country, Zelensky said such sanctions would deprive Russia of any possibility to finance the war. Zelensky, uh, Zelensky's uh, daring to visit Britain in a bid for more advanced weapons comes as Kiev braces for the expected Russia offensive and hatches its own plan to retake land held by Moscow's forces. It was only his second confirmed journey outside Ukraine since Russia invaded nearly a year ago. ...and stand before you on behalf of the brave, on behalf of our warriors who are now in the trenches under enemy artillery fire, on behalf of our air gunners and every defender of the sky who protects Ukraine against enemy aircrafts and missiles, on behalf of our tank men who fight to restore our Ukrainian borders, on behalf of our conscripts who are being trained now, including here in Britain. Thank you, Britain. Great Britain, you extended your helping hand when the world had not yet come to understand how to react. Boris. Now, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Wednesday visited the disaster zone in his country as criticism grows over the official response following the earthquake that rocked Turkey and Syria. President Erdogan defended the response, saying it's not possible to prepare for disasters of such magnitude. Erdogan acknowledged there has been difficulties with the initial response, but blamed delays on damaged roads and airports. More than 11,000 people in southern Turkey and northern Syria are now known to have been killed in Monday's earthquake. <laughs> Mm. What a sad one. Now the U.S. President Joe Biden has called on Republicans to help finish the job of delivering for hardworking families as the Democrats stressed the importance of bipartisanship to a divided Congress where the lower chamber now has a Republican majority. In his annual State of the Union address, President Biden also vowed to defend U.S. sovereignty in the wake of an incursion by an alleged Chinese spy balloon. The speech was seen as a roadmap for the widely expected 20 2024 re-election bid. President Biden's 73 minutes address came as his public approval ratings hovers near the lowest level of his presidency. In the last two years, my administration has cut the deficit by more than one point of reduction in American history. <laughs> Under the previous administration, the American deficit went up four years in a row. Because those record deficits, no president added more to the national debt in any four years than my predecessor. Nearly 25 percent of the entire national debt that took over 200 years to accumulate was added by just one administration alone, the last one. They're the facts. Check it out. Well, now take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you sports stories. Please stay tuned. Hmm. 
bi eko wa kore ti gbogbo wa je alenu loro ni gba kan kikun eko loda o to wa nju si dodon ni ifokan bale ara ilu dr lajidi adediran kaju e jandofu governor ki gbogbo ona se rin foko oro ajiti oni pakan leke e je ka fi ibo didi gbara wa lowo ogun gbodo nro so e je ka gbaruku ti dr jidi adediran ati fun ke akindele si ifo gomino ipile eko ati gba keji labi asi a egbe oselu pdp fun idagbasuke ati lo si waju to pe Vote Jandor for Lagos Governor 2023. PDP Power to the People. Our friends of Lagos, no shiuni go wa ikidi. Welcome back. Gabriel Jesus has returned to Arsenal to step up his recovery following surgery on a knee issue in December. The Brazilian striker has not featured for the Ghana since before the World Cup due to the injury sustained while representing his country in Qatar. He underwent surgery in London before Christmas, has been slowly working his way back to fitness ever since, with the forward now walking without the need for crutches or a knee brace. Jesus spent time in England last month working with Arsenal's medical team and was at the Emirates Stadium on the 22nd of January to watch the Gunners beat Manchester United 3-2. And talking to his seven-time Grand Slam champion, Venus Williams, faces a long spell on the sidelines due to the hamstring injury that ended her hopes of playing in last month's Australian Open. But a 42-year-old is determined to get back on court at some point. She was set to play in our 22nd Australian Open after being given a white card, but the twice finalist sustained the injury while preparing at the Auckland Classic. Williams, who has won five Wimbledon titles and two U.S. Open crowns is ranked 664th in the world, having returned to competitive action in Auckland for the first time since being dumped out of last year's U.S. Open in the first round. And in basketball, LeBron James has become NBA's all-time points record holder after surpassing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's total of 38,387, 20 seasons on from his debut. The points came for the LA Lakers against the Oklahoma City Thunder in a 130 to 133 defeat where he put up 38. James scored 20 points in the first half with a full showcase of the offensive talent that still shines blindingly after two decades in the NBA. And he tore through uh, the record in the 16 point third quarter, capped by a pretty jumper with 10.9 seconds left in the third quarter. And tonight on the news, as the Randolph were brought to you that the Supreme Court has restrained the Central Bank of Nigeria from implementing the deadline of February 10 for, to end the validity of the old Naira notes. Now, INEC has assured the federal government of its readiness to hold and conduct the general election of February 25, 2023 successfully. In foreign news, Zelensky is urging allies to send fighter jets during his trip to the United Kingdom. And Gabriel Jesus in sports has returned to Arsenal after going through a knee surgery. All right, many thanks for joining us on our primetime news tonight. You can follow us across our social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at MITV underscore NG and on YouTube at MITV and Nigeria. You only need to click the subscribe button, the like button, or the follow button. I am Tomi Singh at Debo Kola. Do have a pleasant night, Good night. <laughs>